Well, there she is, there's Paysanne, still a little bit on the old closed side. And there's Conway in all its glory. And here's me staring into a mobile phone like some teenager making a vlog. It's depressing. Anyway, listen, as the sun is out and it is gloriously out, uh, I thought I'd make and show you how to make something that we do and have been doing here for about 30 years. And you can do now in your own home since you can't technically come to us. <laughs> Wherever in the world you are, this is our spectacular soup de pêcheur, stroke brie base, stroke fish soup, stroke magnifique, and it's wonderful. Paysan, Paysan, we haven't got a theme song. Yes, this is one of Mum's absolute staples. It's been on the menu since we first started. Um, and it's a sort of Mediterranean style bouillie base type thing. That's our fish soup. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to make the fish soup and then I'm going to add to that uh, a few extra things to make it more like a proper sit down meal, middle of the table thing, sun shining. Rosé down the gullet. Now you can use a bought-in stock fish stock cube. Why bother though? I mean really, the heart of this dish is the stock. And once you've had it done this way, the proper way, any fish soup you're gonna have after this will taste like it's come out of a can. And you know, you love your guests, so give them the good stuff. Now the first ingredient you need for a fish stock is a fishmonger. Uh, if you're lucky enough to have one of those, uh, they are vital because the fish stock is really all about the bones. Um, the supermarkets very often don't really tend to have any bones in it or comes in without. So if you can find a fishmonger, brilliant. Uh, more upside on the way, totally free. It's this, this fish stock costs nothing. No one's going to charge you for fish bones. Um, so it's next to niche. We are very lucky. We've got a very good fishmongers, uh, mermaid seafoods. And they've given us these rather lovely uh, turbot bones. So um, we're going to make the stock. This is going to be a recipe in two stages. Uh, I'm going to make the stock today. I'm going to make a rui today. That's going to be something that goes with it. And then on part two, we're actually going to make the soup itself. And this is one of these recipes where you do the hard graft, the faff, well before your guests arrive, days before your guests arrive. So when it actually comes down to making it on the day, it's really... It's really a cinch. The hard work has already been done at your own time. You've got your own music on. Yeah, it's be fine. So let's get the show on the road, shall we? And the recipe I'm going to be using is from this rather splendid cookbook. Isn't that nice? So I pop Mr. Turbot in here. Uh, on top of him, I'm going to put a dash of fine herb, uh, juice of half a lemon, do, 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 do. loads and loads of black pepper, and a little bit of fleur de sel salt. Fill the pan with water. And put a fire under it. I'm gonna bring that to the boil and then simmer it for about 30 minutes. And it will look like that, brought to a boil and then drop down to a simmer. Uh, why though are all the windows in the kitchen completely open? Why is the door to the rest of the house completely closed? One very simple reason, I'm afraid, the downside of making this recipe is that your kitchen will temporarily smell of cat's breath. Anyway, so while that's boiling away, I'm going to make the rui. What is a rui? Rui is a rather splendid um, sort of paste that goes with the fish soup. Anyway, the ingredients are thus, and it's an extremely, as Dad said, idiot-proof dish to make. This rather unappealing thing is uh, some stale bread, stale white bread, which I've soaked and formed into a nice big dough. So I'm gonna put that in there. Then I'm going to add some roasted red pepper, which has been, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say roasted and de-seeded. No, bought. A teaspoon of tomato puree, a teaspoon of smoked paprika, a teaspoon of harissa paste. This is very important. You need a nice big kick with this uh, with this paste. And two cloves of garlic, which I have bashed into as sort of close to a puree as I can get. And some olive oil. And then I'm just going to whiz it. <laughs> Thank you. 
And then what you're after is something like that. Uh, it's a paste and you're going to spread that over some croutes and sprinkle some grated cheese over there, some gruyere. And that's going to be the finishing touch. Now, this is the slightly tricky part and not without a hint of danger. This is the point. A slightly more time consuming but much less dangerous way of doing this, and like this idiot, is to ladle the stock idea, from one pan to the other the through the sieve. Out. What a filthy job. And there we are, all drained. Now, because I am a perfectionist, or more accurately, I would like to portray myself as a perfectionist, I'm going to actually double strain it uh, so we get an even finer stock. Like so. And there we are. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the heat up on this. And I'm going to reduce this by probably about close to half until it looks like this. Um, you are going to find bits like this. Um, I get rid of as much of this as you can. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just let that cool down. I'm gonna stick it in the fridge uh, where it will stay until the very time when I need it to make the fish soup. That will be part two, which I guarantee will be the godfather part two of cheaply made food videos. See you then.